Don't let hard times stop you from making money. In this video, I'm gonna go over the best side hustles to do during hard times. Before I get into the video, please do me a favor if you're not already, click the subscribe button down below and give it a like if you find value in this video. These hard times have been difficult for everyone. Businesses are shutting down, people are losing their jobs, and majority of people I know are filing for unemployment. But you do not have to sit back and wait for things to get back to normal. There are some side hustles you can do to make money now. The first side hustle you can do is food delivery service. As of lately, a lot of restaurants are doing takeout only and a lot of customers nowadays don't want to go to the store to risk getting sick. So the demand of food delivery services has risen greatly recently. There's a ton of companies you could work for that will basically have you come to the restaurants, pick up the food that the customers order, then go deliver it to the customer. All you need to get started is a car, car insurance, a smartphone, a little bit of gas, and a whole lot of time. A huge plus of being a driver for one of these companies is that you can often get tips that really add up and make you a lot of money in the end run. And this brings us to the second side hustle, which is Amazon FBA retail arbitrage. So during these hard times, online shopping has gone through the roof. Everyone's ordering online rather than going out to stores. Let me break down real quick what Amazon FBA is. It's basically when you send in products to Amazon's warehouse, they take it into the warehouse, store it, and then whenever a customer orders that item, Amazon will package it and then ship it out directly to your customer. I wanna focus more on retail arbitrage. That's when you go to a store, you bring your phone with you and you start scanning through the Amazon sellers app and you look for items that are selling for way cheaper in the store than they would on Amazon. Amazon, the, the app is really good because it gives you a breakdown of how much you're spending for the product and how much you can make after you send it into Amazon. I absolutely love doing retail arbitrage for Amazon because every time I go into a store, I have no idea what I'm gonna find. Uh, most of the times I'm scanning every single thing and I'll find a gem. Like for instance, I bought like this Undertaker action figure for $5 at five below. And I ended up selling like eight of them for $25 each, making around $15 profit each one. So it's great, it's kind of like a little treasure hunt. But yeah, that's just one example. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be very different for you, what you're gonna find. And to be honest, you might go to some stores and might not see anything but it is a hustle, so you're gonna have to just keep going until you actually find a store that has products that you can sell and make profit on. My absolute favorite part about this business is that my job ends once I ship everything to the warehouse. Amazon handles everything else, uh, even the customer service. I don't have to deal with returns, I don't have to deal with all that funny stuff, and you guys, I'm not gonna sit here and give you guys the breakdown on how to get started. There's hundreds of videos on YouTube, just do some research and you'll learn like I did. The next side hustle is Etsy. Etsy is a marketplace where vendors make handmade items and ship it to customers all around the world. Etsy is a really good business to do during these hard times because you don't really have to go out. Besides just dropping off your orders to the post office, you can make everything from your home, your home office, or wherever you actually do business. If you're not that crafty and you're not really good at making handmade items, Maybe your mom knows how, maybe your little brother. It's just, you know, a reason to get your family involved and you guys can just basically become business partners. The reasons why I'm so confident that this is a great side hustle for these hard times is because I actually have a shop myself. I sell these custom big heads to customers for weddings, parties, all types of events. As of recently, I've been getting a ton of orders from people that are making heads of family members or friends that can't attend these events due to these hard times. And yeah, you guys, there's just a huge opportunity to be made. I'm not saying you should go on Etsy, create an account and make big heads. That's just my niche. I just happen to be really good at it and it's just something I've done for a few years, so I got it down. But you know, you can do it with anything. I've seen sellers selling custom mugs, custom shirts, custom masks, just knickknacks, anything that you want, customize it for that person and you can make a pretty good profit if you do it right. So if you are gonna start an Etsy shop, one tip that I can give you is to find a niche and stick to it. For example, if you make custom t-shirts, make them for people that have pets. You can just put a dog face on a shirt and send it out. A lot of people will probably be into that. Knowing what people are gonna search and browse for can give you a lot of business, so having a niche like that can really help. And that brings us to the next side hustle, which is vending. I know a lot of people in the industry will say that vending has taken a huge hit, and I don't disagree with that, it has. But it's not fully dead. Uh, I still have my vending stuff still out in the field and it still make me money today. I'm gonna be discussing three types of vending. The first one is full line vending. If you've ever gone to like a laundromat and you've seen the big snack machines next to the soda machines, that's what full line vending is. Full line is gonna bring you the most profit just because the margins on the items are high, but it's gonna require more of your time because you're gonna be in and out from Sam's Club, you're gonna go back to the location to fill it up, all that good stuff, but it just takes a lot of time. But if you have the time and you want the margins, go for full line. Before all this stuff happened, this year I got out of full line. 
uh, just solely because I bought really bad old machines for cheap, thinking I could save money, which I should have just bought great machines. But that's just a lesson to be learned. Don't really skimp out on that. But I want to mention with all types of vending, it's all about the location. You're going to have to hit the streets, make some phone calls, go on Facebook, and try to find these solid locations. So let's talk about bulk vending. Bulk vending is basically those machines you see where you put a quarter in, twist it, and then usually dispenses candy. Unlike full line, bulk vending is a lot easier to put your machines into locations. It's just basically a, a machine you can put in back of your car, pick it up, drop it off. So whereas full line, you have to have a truck or a trailer. Those machines can weigh up to like a thousand pounds, 800 pounds, and you need manpower to do that. But again, you know, there's a drop off, you know, full line, more money, more work, bulk, less money. It's easier. It's just, you know, a matter of you deciding what's more worth your time and effort. And again, I have to say this just so you guys understand that the industry has been impacted. And me personally, I've taken about half of my machines out of location, but I'm still doing okay. I still have some locations like, uh, for example, I went to a tire shop earlier today to just show you guys that, you know, I'm still making money during these hard times. Okay, so this has been about two months since I've last been here to collect the gumballs. Um, I had to actually throw out the gumballs that were inside the machine. The lady there said that the gumballs were in the sun too long and they got too hard. They actually offered to pay for that. They said it was their mistake because they moved the machine, but they noticed about two to three weeks ago that uh, the gums have gotten hard and they just basically uh, stopped using it. But you know, it's a lot of money in here, man. I, for uh, about a month and a half, a good amount of change. Uh, give me a second, I'm going to count this up to give you guys a total. So much change, man. Okay, <laughs> so right here I have $49 and about 60 cents. It's actually a pretty good amount of money, you guys, given the fact it was only one and a half months and we are in a how I calculate my profit for the gumballs is basically uh, each vend is 25 cents a gumball costs three cents so my profit margin is uh, what 22 cents per one I love vending gumballs because the profit margin is huge and the gumballs last forever uh, as long as you don't put them in the Sun obviously so yes, you can still make money doing bulk vending. This is just one example. I just wanted to give you guys a visual of, you know, a machine that's still out in the field and it's still making money during these hard times. And that brings us to honor boxes. Just to sum it up, an honor box is basically a box that's linked with a charity that has candy in it and a slot for customers to take a candy and drop the money inside that deposit slot. Uh, I went and made a video earlier this year about this topic. So if you're interested, go ahead and click the link in the description and you can learn a lot from that. But anyways, guys, I went earlier today to one of my locations just to show you that, yes, I'm still making money for this and it's still a profitable business. Thank you so much. All right, so looking at this box, uh, there's about maybe two to three dollars left of pops inside. I'd probably say around three. I normally put about ten dollars worth of lollipops inside the box. Um, that way, you know, I stuff as much as I can. That way, I can, you know, spread out the collections. But again, you guys, there's a video down below uh, where I explain the um, honor box business. I've already done that, so I'm not going to get into details. So let's see how much is in here, all right? Let's open it up. Grab up. Grab my little thing here. This is on a 
Not bad, not bad. I'm gonna count this up and I'll let you guys know how much is here total. So that leaves us with $27 and about 40 cents and some pennies. Um, that means we made about $20 profit. Um, and then you just subtract, you know, the fees for the, uh, for the honor box. So yeah, that's not bad. $20, you know, this probably took me no more than, I don't know, maybe no more than three to four minutes to go in there, collect the box and count this. So if you're wondering if this is still a good business to be in, the answer is yes. It's still going to take some time to find these locations. Uh, this one here is a burger joint and yeah, you know, there's no dine-in, but people are still coming in to pick up orders to go. And uh, this is two weeks, $20 in two weeks may not seem like a lot, but again, it's only four minutes of work, totally worth it. And it's just, you know, easy, easy money. And the last side hustle is credit card churning. Before I mention anything, I just wanna make a, a quick point that this isn't something you can turn into a job or scale at all. It's just kind of a finesse and a little hustle. In short, credit card churning is taking advantage of the sign up bonuses from these credit card companies by spending a certain amount of money in a, a lot of time. These bonuses can range anywhere from $100 all the way up to $1,200. If you're gonna do this, I highly recommend that you spend money on things that you are already planning on spending. Maybe for gas, grocery shopping, or hey, maybe one of your new side hustles. For me, when I started my Amazon FBA business earlier this year, I opened up a few credit cards and used that required money on my business. I went out to stores and bought product. Another plus of credit card churning is that your credit over time will increase because you have more available credit. So I would recommend to do what I did, which is going to creditkarma.com to see what cards you can actually apply for and and your odds of getting approved or not for that credit card and looking more into the details on what's the bonus, how much do you have to spend, and a huge, huge point guys, every credit card you wanna apply for, make sure there's no annual fee, that will kind of defeat the whole purpose of credit card churning. If there's an annual fee, you're gonna end up eating into your profits, and that's just something you don't wanna do, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of this whole hustle. So let's look at a few credit cards that are offering some sign-up bonuses. One of the first credit cards I got was the Wells Fargo CashWise Visa card. Just spend $500 in the first three months and get $150 in sign-up bonus. And my favorite part is that this card has no annual fee. And here's the Bank of America Cash Rewards credit card. This one here is gonna earn you $200 in sign-up bonus after you spend at least $1,000 in purchases. With 90 days so that's gonna do it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate all the support make sure if you're not already subscribe hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video